Hey Nils, it's time ago again for recorded small talk on YouTube. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so what are we allowed to say? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe you should log out again to just restart that recording. <laughs> is it to restart it then? The recording is started automatically and it's pushed into the cloud. Oh, okay. And um, in the end, I, Kendall, I think just pushes the raw recording to YouTube. To YouTube. Oh, okay. So actually, each TSC meeting is uh, accessible publicly mm -hmm. from YouTube. Okay. Yes. Also, engineering by weekly and DevOps and other calls. Yeah, so okay. um, arm releasing calls should be pushed there. Hi. Hey everyone. Hello, Shruti. All right, sorry, a couple minutes after. So let's go ahead and um, get started here. Let me just pull up the agenda. Okay, so first thing that we have on our agenda, um, I just wanted to give a friendly reminder for the um, voting members of the TSC um, and thank Shruti for being an amazing TSC chair. Um, see, I know y'all probably seen on Slack that she has decided to resign as the chair, but she's still gonna stay on uh, as a voting member of the TSC um, through the end of her term. Um, so now it's time to elect a new TSC chair. I sent out a, um, a note last week, letting everyone know that nominations are open. 
for the TSC chair election. So if you would like to um, nominate yourself or someone else who's a voting member of the TSC, uh, please send myself a Slack um, or an, an email to kperez at linuxfoundation.org. Um, nominations will close tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so please uh, get those in uh, if you would like to nominate anyone. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to direct those my way. All right, um, next we have um, our weekly check-ins. Um, so we'll start with release updates from Govind or Daji. Sure, um, I can go ahead and share my screen. Can you see my share? Yes. Yeah, so these are the notes uh, that we took in the last release meeting. Um, not all of them are relevant. I'll just quickly uh, highlight uh, the important points. So uh, as we updated in the last meeting, 1.8 release is getting postponed. Uh, that's because of the uh, CI instability and uh, TNG team have identified uh, these jobs, four uh, CA jobs as unstable, LT index test, CWAG and uh, AGW build all job and 5G. So they need some more time to stabilize it. So that is work in progress. And uh, the second item is about uh, enabling uh, build a job for ARM. And uh, Tim is actively working on that. And uh, mostly it will be enabled in a week. Uh, so that's on the ARM CI build job. And uh, uh, next thing is about the build uh, breakage. This is not relevant. Uh, we reported this to TNG team and they fixed it. So now the Docker build is uh, uh, smooth in ARM architecture. Okay. And, uh, um, and uh, regarding the uh, uh, AGW Docker image hosting in Magma Artifactory, we had some discussions in the past whether it is allowed to be hosted. Then we came to a conclusion after talking to Linux Foundation members that whatever uh, image is getting built through uh, Magma CA can be hosted in Magma Artifactory. Towards that, uh, a new CA job needs to be added and uh, Tim and Shubham are, uh, uh, will be working on that. And uh, from uh, on OV OBS changes were made by the Wave Labs team and uh, that needs to be tested on Docker environment that is still pending from uh, Wave Labs team. And the last one is on the security issue related to AMI uh, and uh, Shubham is looking into it. So these are some of the 1.8 release blockers uh, which needs to be fixed. And after that, we'll come up with a timeline uh, when we can actually cut a branch. So that's it. Uh, uh, yeah, so Labs team can give further updates. Sure. So I think uh, we got the new uh, build from uh, the build job and the basic sanity looks okay. Uh, so when from the Magma Artifactory, the latest Debian package is working fine. Few of the 5G test cases we verified, all looks good. Uh, we are in the process of running the whole suit. So hopefully we'll have all the results by tomorrow, but all the basic sanity looks okay. Uh, on the latest build for today. I don't have the exact build number, but whatever was available uh, like in the evening uh, looks good. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can just give the related um, CI update to that. So yeah, sure. uh, we just, um, so we, um, I think the uh, HEW build is now green. And um, so we managed to fix that. And um, as you said, now, um, now we are waiting for updates if everything is actually fixed and if everything works. So the HEW build is um, green. The um, LTE um, build became also more stable with that. And um, I think Ankit wants to look into that or have a look into that. And maybe Niels wants to correct me on that. Um, but um, that also is now in a better shape and uh, might be sufficiently stable. 5G is the same. Um, the only one that is still very flaky is uh, the CWF or CVA, 
CWAG test um, that was already previously um, flaky and the um, update from Bionic to Focal um, just made the flakiness more prominent. There are a lot of timing tests that depend on IO and um, somehow with this distribution update, the timings got stricter or the IO became, became faster. The, um, the tests um, trip more often right now, but in general it's green, but it's just very, very flaky. So with sufficient runs, you can get green results. And um, so um, in summary, I think the um, blocking CI chops are now in a better shape and um, CWAG is maybe also in a, um, already in a good enough shape. So that I would say um, CI should no longer be a blocking, uh, a blocking point on, point on the release list. And yeah, I think there was some good progress made. Thanks, thanks. thanks. And additionally, there are some new findings that are non-blocking that we will add to the backlog and that um, just will further improve flakiness and stability and all of CI. So, yeah. Thank you. And that's it on the release side. Thank you. Um, next, uh, DevOps updates. Yeah, so I can give some updates. So team is continually, continually working on the ARM CI pipelines for x86 and ARM both. Uh, we are also looking the kernel issue, okay, because Docker image should be built in hardware for kernel. And that's not the current case with our GitHub action. So we may switch some base image. So we are trying that also. Regarding the AMI, there are two base AMIs. The one is the bootstrap, second is the access gateway uh, AMI. So bootstrap it has been like successfully built using our GitHub action CI. Regarding the AWS CM, uh, CI build, access gateway uh, CI build for uh, AMI, it's building if I, we run it locally in a virtual environment, the Ansible deployment job. But it's somehow it's not working on the AWS environment, the same script. So initially, Jessica from Linux Foundation built that script, the CI one. So I talked to her and created a support ticket in their uh, Linux Foundation support channel. So last week they were at the open source summit. So this will they will also look into it. So yeah, we are working on that. So probably this week uh, the Access Gateway MI will be successful. Yeah. That's it. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shubham. Um, next, do we have any testing updates? I'll take the silence as a no. Um, outreach, any outreach updates? I know the outreach uh, committee is meeting tomorrow, so uh, maybe we'll have um, an update um, at the next meeting. Okay, Lucas, do we have you on the call for security update? Doesn't look like we have Lucas today. Okay, so do we have uh, Rashmi for C++ migration? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, last week uh, for the SNAP module, we were able to uh, convert the hash tables to map. And as a part of MM application, we uh, Vikram is working, converting the C files to CPP. And recently, Prithvi has joined to convert the SP gateway modules, all the C files to CPP. Once uh, we uh, convert all the C files to CPP, we'll switch like uh, uh, converting hash tables to map. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe one question for you, Rashmi, and uh, maybe uh, Shruti as well. So is there a way for me to uh, wrap my head around like the overall timeline for all of these things? Like, is there something that we're projecting forward? 
Yeah, um, Amar, we have prepared one uh, Excel sheet, like to cover how, how much time does it take. But uh, in one basic thing, what we missed is like converting the C files to CPP, because in order to use any of the uh, CPP uh, operations like uh, string operations or the map, we have to convert all C files to CPP. That thing is missed. And uh, doing so, like it is resulting into multiple warnings and errors and uh, linking errors. Got it. So do you need to revisit that spreadsheet? Is that what the next step is? Yeah, mm. we'll revisit it. Okay. And we'll publish like uh, with the spreadsheet and it will be visible. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, next, uh, Basil Effer Nils. Yeah, hello everybody. Um, so the last thing the team worked on was optimization of the remote caching, uh, mostly in order to reduce AWS costs. Uh, some optimizations are already deployed and some are still in progress, but we already see that it's going down. Uh, we had several fixes and detail improvements, mostly based on that the team last week visited the Basel Exchange conference and we got some nice uh, views how, how other people solve uh, Basel problems. So uh, this is currently uh, yeah, working into the uh, current uh, Basel state, uh, but most of the team was uh, occupied with supporting with the uh, CI issues. That's it from my side. Thank you. So one uh, thing, uh, Niels, uh, so uh, I connected with Max last, last week. Uh, and so one of the things that uh, he'd offered is a sort of an engineering deep dive on the whole like Basil project and like what the objectives are. And I, I don't know if I'm phrasing it the right way, Max, but in one of the bi-weekly engineering meetings. So that would be interesting if uh, you guys can uh, prepare that. So maybe the question that uh, we're trying to uh, make more front and center is like, what is the advantage of this effort to users uh, as opposed to developers as well? Um, and you know, just trying to you know position that effort in the in the right way. Yep. Of course, we can prepare something. So for the uh, next engineering by weekly, I think it's on Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah, as, as yeah, it doesn't have to be this one, it could be the next one, but just something that you guys should probably flag. Of course, we will prepare something, sure. Is that accurate, Max? Did I summarize it okay? Yeah, that, that's uh, accurate. Um, yeah. Okay, um, move on to the next update, um, data path. From Nick or Yogesh. Yeah, I think nothing from my side. Uh, uh, Nick, any anything from your end? Uh, nope. Okay. Yeah, nothing candle from our side. Okay. No worries. Thank you. Um, and then lastly, a roadmap update, Shruti or. Joey, is any updates on the uh, deployer feedback? I know we had a few updates last week. I saw a thread from, from Aswin who said that I charge the, uh, which is exciting. Um, and it's not like it, 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 it was with, it, I believe some folks from the community outreach team who were proposing ways to collect the info and display it privately. And that's all kind of occurred. So we've collected feed back and it's in the ESC confluence. And so everyone can now see 
what deployers of magma see as game points and feature gaps. And I think the next question for us is how do we translate that into the project? And so like Shuruti was previous really the owner as the chair of the road map action item. I'm not sure if that's still true or if. I have a quick question maybe for Amar. So I'm wondering if some of what uh, the inputs that are coming in can be useful for the work stream that you're leading. And then if so, we could maybe map uh, what the common most common point, pain points are and then who is willing to actually fix those pain points. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, I, I can follow up on that as well. Thank you. But I mean, who is so who is yes. now? Because from the email thread, it sounded like the board of the project wants to see a road. Map and so, he having a comment in an in an email signing ownership seems like an incomplete way to do it. So, who is the owner of? creating the technical roadmap for the project. Right. The, so the, the answer there is the TSC is responsible for creating the roadmap and creating the roadmap to the extent that, and that's why we have been leading the effort on what should be uh, what should be the features and informing the board that this is the roadmap which has clear owners and seems deliverable. So I think it's the the governing board is is looking at the TSC to to define the tile like define the feature not define to define the list of features and the and and link them to the release target so that if the board is aware of, the progress of the project and the roadmap also becomes and I, in general like it's it's for the entire community to be aware of what to expect from in the in the near in the short term and the long term um and it's to the as the tsc chair uh me for the next few weeks and then the next person they become the interface between the TSC and the governing board and saying, okay, this is how this is what the progress is. And this is this is the progress of the roadmap career that uh, on the roadmap in terms of what are we targeting and how are we deliver achieving those targets? Are we on track? And uh, so so as as the as the chair, the role of the chair is to coordinate the effort and moderate this thought thought process. The whole TSC is involved in like brainstorming and come uh, and gathering this feedback. And the outreach um, committee can help us reach out. Um, I think Amar has also started taking initiative on talking to deployers to get some feedback on what should we prioritize. So all that has to come together in in filling up this table that we started. So I wanted to flash this. I think Joey, the, this is where um, Wave Labs team and Freedom Fi have summarized some of the pain points. 
I think the next step would be and and looks like we have a we have a list of things here which do they map to any entry on the roadmap table is the that would be the next step for freedom phi and wave labs to follow on and if and the the key question to answer there is is the team willing to take up the owner or are these items we are already working on and planning to upstream or uh, you that they are just open items that need owners from the community right so if you can add some more color to um, some of these bullets and say oh these are there are like there is an open issue assigned like which relates to this pain point of your feature gap and there is an owner or there's not an owner uh, mapping this to the roadmap would make would help would be the logical next step um, on top of that i think i would also request freedom fight team and wave labs team to give given that the discussion is where the discussion is around grants uh, please go ahead and revise these action uh, these items that are on the list which is pending grant approval let's go on with us either we put them in another another bucket at the bottom that oh this is these these are stalled at the moment and we are not going to work on it or what's the what's the plan b because the grant process is paused right so um, it would be good to see a roadmap that's in progress and that's uh, um, that's uh, happening than say oh um we are everything stalled right so i see a few items i, I move the release target column just ahead to give people folks a sense of um 1.8 has 5gsa domain proxy and some ci stability features that's the release target i think as we are getting close to the finish line on the 1.8 release it's not, it would be good to start planning for 1.9 and so the I would like to call out to every, everyone on on this call. Uh, try to capture whatever you what your short term plans are on this in this table and what you are targeting for release one dot nine. Right, and we would be and depending on um, the the feature ownership, it rate would be good to find the owner for the next release tar target as well. Right, so it's um, a, it's uh, it's something that we as a team have to uh, get to the roadmap. Any does that make sense to other folks? Any questions? Yeah, I think that makes sense, and I can go in and. Um rearrange the freedom five added roadmap items to show plan work and move existing items that are not in the current plan to do a gone hold section great sure well yeah i'll also do from wave left side I'll rearrange them. Okay, thank you. Amar, did you Joey, have one, any comments? Yeah. yeah, sorry, Joey, one question for you. Uh, so I know you had spoken to me about flashing the radios, uh, like the software upgrade thing, and that might be something that uh, Freedom5 may be uh, interested in working in the open on. Is that part of the domain proxy track or it's a separate thing? Oh, flashing up the radios. That is a um, that is a separate item. I believe it's in the list, or maybe it's not, and I need to add it. Yeah, it looks like maybe it's not in the list, and I need to add it. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, because Sircom was also interested in that, and you probably. Know <laughs> Yeah, for brief, yeah, additional color for others. We're going to work on similar to how you can create an upgrade here for the AGW. 
um, we want to have EMS controlled upgrade of the software for connected and managed radios. So any radio that you know BD is capable of setting the configuration of and interacting with the domain proxy, we want the ability to push where to do those radios. So we will be adding that functionality and contributing it upstream. Thanks, Trey. Yep, perfect. Okay, great. Um, we'll move to the next agenda topic from Sebastian Thomas. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the handling of, of some third party dependencies in Magma, in particular, a Python library called AIO Eventlet. Um, we've been looking into a lot of software dependency upgrades recently, and one of them is upgrading Python to the latest release 3.10. And it turns out that our current handling of this dependency is not uh, not compatible with Python 3.10. The thing is that uh, this is a library that has been unmaintained for several years. And um, to make them work with Magma, we apply several patches uh, at multiple uh, steps of the build process. And um, this will not work anymore with uh, Python 3.10. So um, what I'm suggesting here is to instead um, maintain or not really maintain, but to have a port of this library that has the patches already uh, applied, where we control the metadata and to keep this for compatible with Magma instead of patching it as a part of the build process. And yeah, I'm just wondering for uh, looking for feedback on this, on whether that might be a good approach. So this is the review dependency, is, is that right? Uh, it's an old dependency. Um, that has been in Magma, in particular, in Pipeline D for a long time. That's right, because um, RY, I don't know if, uh, Nick, are you on? Yeah, so this is because RYU is pulling it in, is that right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Sorry, I lost you, Nick. Yeah, sorry, I got disconnected for like a few minutes before. Could you repeat the full question? Yeah, no, the AIO event light is being pulled in by you, right? Yeah, there's a weird dependency issue where Rui is not updated um, or maintained. So there's like a AI event that we patched it to work with Rui, but we can update to the new version because it just didn't work. <laughs> Got it. And we've not reached out to upstream view to. I don't think upstream view does anything these days. The upstream archive is um, um, archived, or the repository is archived. Okay. So we can't even create a pull request. Yeah, they're not. They don't do anything anymore. Um, so sounds good. So just the, one other possible question here is, uh, what are the options? Other than this, is there any other option? Uh, another option would be to go towards a kind of mono repository um, approach and really include this code into Magma directly. Um, and the third option would be to try to get rid of this dependency completely. Because I think with the new async IO features, um, it's it's not really needed anymore. But it would be significant work to to realize how to um, to change pipeline so that you don't need it. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So maybe uh, that would yeah. So if there are no objections, a fork is fine. 
but maybe just let's track the removing uh, migrating to async IO or something somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's also the govern governance question if we want to create this fork in the Magma space on GitHub. So. Yeah. Um, typically, at least for the other uh, repos that we've had, like the one on the uh, for the data in uh, data model for like carrier Wi-Fi and stuff, we've created a um, sub repo within Magma and just maintained it there. I don't know if we want to just go with the same model, but might be a question that we ask the LF legal team as well. Yeah, and I might actually think about bringing up the question why, um, whether we want to do that also for other things that we patch, like Open Vswitch and other code where we have patch files in our source tree. But um, that's maybe for a different discussion. Yeah, obvious. I think the right longer term fix is for us to up, try to upstream them, like you know, because that's not a dead project. Um, and it's going to be like a pain to continue to maintain it. But like, yeah, the stuff like the no tools and stuff like that, I think, yeah, having a fork may be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so maybe, uh, so who has the follow up on checking with the LF uh, team on where we want to, if we're forking it, where we want to put it? I, I can, uh, yeah, yeah, Max, we can work together on that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we can go ahead and move to the next agenda item from Amar. Yeah, this is more just um, a little bit of a information collection uh, item, but um, I spoke to um, a bunch of companies um, over the last like week, week and a half. So I think there's reasonable uh, momentum behind uh, the community contributing engineering resources for a Mockin sort of focused uh, effort between Freedom 5, Highway 9, Bicells, and Circom. Um, and so that would be a good like sort of pilot, I would say, to drive a significant feature all through the community. And uh, I also connected with Shruti and you know, maybe we'll try to get some help from uh, folks on how to bootstrap the effort, but at least we'll get engineering from external contributors and we can track that. Uh, for the access gateway mobility, which I thought is another potential feature, it's not as burning a need. And so uh, at least my two cents at this point is, let's pilot with one significant feature and figure out how to structure that, track that, like develop that in a like a fully open way, and then you know, um, depending on that trajectory, we we can engage on the interaccess gateway mobility stuff as well. So I'll just pause there, and if folks have any questions on the mock and stuff, uh, I can take that. So Omar, um, are you tracking this as? somewhere on GitHub at the moment or some Google doc, which can be shared. Yeah, yeah. So I think the that would be the, um, um, that was the question that I had for this group is like, what's the best way to, uh, okay, now that we've identified at least four companies that are in our ecosystem who are interested in this and some of them are contributing engineering resources, like obviously Bicells and Circom can contribute radios, but not uh, software engineers, but uh, Freedom Fi and Highway 9 can contribute engineers. Like, what's the best way to structure this? I think one in with the existing processes, we can definitely start this as a GitHub issue, which is tagged as a proposal. So, and collaborate there or collaborate on a Google Doc and link it to the GitHub issue and uh, track it there and then get feedback. And once it has been iterated and it's ready for review for the TSC one of the owners can present it to the TSC, right? Got it. 
Okay, I can kick that off. I'll also, if it's okay, create a dedicated Slack channel just to have an async communication or do you, is that not condoned? I think keeping the discussion on GitHub issue makes it easy to keep one source of truth. Okay. So just in terms of keeping the context alive. Okay, I'll start there and if, if I run into issues, then we can uh, go from there. Okay, that sounds good. Um, the and second- can follow up with a thread on HashDev or uh, other okay. channels. Okay, okay, sounds good. So the um, other thing that came up was uh, the state of uh, 5G testing and who owns that, what's the status, like what's, like I, I've heard like, there's some effort from OAI, there's some effort from Wave Labs, and then there's uh, obviously the CI stabilization work that the TNG folks are doing. So I just wanted to under like, and that's there's there's decent interest in the five G, like at least starting to see a trajectory there. So I just want to understand where that is happening and how that is going. And if there's someone I need to follow up offline, I can also follow up on that. Who has sure the most was. contact, I guess, on the five G testing? So our I think from Wave Labs team, uh, we are uh, contributing to the towards the CI. And uh, we are using the uh, Spirant and uh, Rebecca tool uh, for the daily CI regression. So uh, from feature perspective, coverage perspective, we are doing the like uh, the maximum coverage. So if there is any question, maybe I can help you. Got it. So where is this test bed? Like how do I get smart on it? Uh, this test bed uh, right now is in WaveLabs infra. Uh, we are just using the Firebase agent, uh, pulling it and running out on our test bed. So it's not, uh, it's not publicly reachable. But uh, if it is needed, maybe I can check with the team and update. Got it. Yeah. So I think maybe the the broader ask here is how do we bring this out into the open so that you know the community can have both visibility as well as you know understand the quality of like where, where is it the uh, the 5g code basis so i'm just going to make sure that you're aware that the ci dashboard does present uh, wave labs results as well the tests are run at their setup but the results are published back to the ci dashboard got it and how is that transitioning to oai so oai is uh, developing new test cases kind of like an s1 ap but for 5g as well as Got some it. federation tests. So this is new test um, test automation that they're developing. Got it. So, okay, so who do I, so yeah, so uh, I'll uh, set up a call with you, Yogesh. And um, so who do I talk to on the OAI side? I'm just trying to map all of this out in my head, actually. I don't want to take up too much time here. I just need to know whom do I talk to. You should talk to, to your fan uh, or Saga. Uh, okay. So, okay, so, okay, I can. Uh, send a note. Yeah. Yogesh, just a quick question. I wanted to make sure you, your team saw the uh, Spirant automation scripts that uh, Sudhi and team upstreamed. Um, this is the scale and performance testing scripts that they had updated. Uh, sure, uh, I'll, I'll check and get back. I don't have that uh, latest info. I'll check okay. and update. Sounds yeah. good, thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so roughly the set of, uh, um, yeah, no, th thanks for that, Ashwin. So uh, I'll figure out where to, um, how to map the 5G testing, but roughly the three things that uh, came out in all the conversation is that uh, one, like there's interest in mock and the second one is like people want to get like better visibility understanding in terms of where 5G code is. And then the third one, I think, is that there are some small features like, you know, uh, Joey mentioned um, upgrading radios and then, you know, Raman networks had some bug fixes and then uh, Highway 9 was talking about IPsec. And those are things that are potential candidates for upstreaming. But other than that, like, that's basically going to be the bulk of the roadmap uh, that we're going to prioritize. But I'll, I'll try to collate all of this information um, into a doc or something and present in one of the TSC meetings. Amar, you can also discuss with uh, Yokesh. Um, there are some bug fixes that these guys are doing on the 5G. 
Uh, most yep. of the time that we are spending right now is to stabilize the 5G code that we have. Uh, exactly. As we are yeah, starting. So, yeah, definitely. So yeah, I, I actually, uh, good, good thing you're here, Kadar. So yeah, let's set up some time. I just want to understand this better. Um, sure, sure. And we also are working uh, with two or three other vendors, um, in some cases uh, with Ratronics as well, uh, to test it and max interop with all the radios that are out there. Uh, right, so that's also an, another effort that's ongoing. All those efforts could be a part of the roadmap after 1.8. That's right. So yeah, so roughly the three things would be Marken, uh, 5G stabilization, and then all Interop. the stability Interop. work that we're doing. Yep. Okay. Interop with new radios. Those could be an obvious uh, uh, roadmap immediately after 1.8. Yeah, sounds good. Got a quick question for you. I know a little while back we had talked about having a landing page for the 5G distro with a current state and performance stats and things like that. I just wanted to check up on the status of that. Um, to my understanding, it's already uh, available in uh, all the release notes and everything uh, in the document. I mean, when you're talking about the landing page, you're talking about the magma uh, core.org web page, uh, Ashwin, just to. Sure. Yeah, that's correct. We we have a page with all the distros, right? And I believe that was supposed to link to the Wave Labs distro page, which um, has more of a, a view for like CIOs and folks that are making decisions on what the current state is, what the future work is. Um, as a distro for 5G, I figured you guys would be owning that. Yeah, so we have a page in magma um, core.org, but it doesn't spill out uh, any performance number of the Distro, right? Because most of it are already captured in the open source community uh, documentations. Um, Got are, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe if you just link it or something. The other one that we had chatted about are the FAQs, because there's a lot of active questions that come in on the 5G side. And so just a, an easy to read thing rather than people having to dig through Slack might be helpful. Okay. Got it. Got it. We can take that as an action point, Yokesh. Um, you know? Sure. sure. The, yeah. We can put it in the community. Of course. Sure. Yeah. Amar, if you don't mind, I would like to be included in that 5G meeting with Yogesh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Any anybody is welcome. Yeah. So I'm I'm just trying to get smart on where the code base is. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I'll I'll set up something, Amar, next week. I'll include the uh, go in the new case if you want. All right, great. <clears throat> that actually brings us to the end of our agenda. Is there any other business that people would like to bring up? Yeah, maybe I missed this. Uh, Amar, was there, Amar, Yokesh, was there any update on 5G roadmap? I know that we created a list of features and uh, you're supposed to be yeah. reaching out to all the, all the leads and all the companies to give inputs and the reason why they need it. Is that progressing? Uh, no, Kadar. I think uh, we floated it around la last week and, uh, you know, Daljit is planning to reach out to the individuals. Uh, some Daljit will uh, reach out and some of them I'll check with them. But as such, uh, there is no feedback on the link which Daljit shared. So we'll reach out to the individuals. So what can we do, Amar? Uh, like now, now we have a list of features that were given inputs from different uh, candidates, created that Excel sheet and we also created all the companies that we need to reach out to prioritize that. Uh, how can we get them onboarded to prioritize which features and why? And would they be interested in contributing towards development of that feature? Yes, no, right? So that we get a good picture as to who is in the game and who is not, and what would uh, um, result as an end content for the roadmap for next uh, 12 to 18 months. Yeah, so I think the, yeah, so, so I don't have a good sense. Um, so at least the companies that we spoke to other than Rattonix and uh, Firecell uh, are not like having 5G immediate needs. Um, so I, I was just trying to get a sense from actually you uh, on, on that. And that's, uh, so yeah, we should have our sync and then maybe figure out, like I, I'm, I, I don't have a strong sense yet. Sure, sure. But at least, uh, Yokesh, if you can send out that link to everyone in this chat, um, they can actually look up the list of features. Absolutely, sure. There is a, a story behind how this whole uh, list of feature came up, Amar, right? Uh, there's a logic behind requests coming from different people, 
uh, and so on, right? Uh, so we can talk about it in the offline. Sounds good, thanks. Any other business? I'll take the silence as a no. Um, and just a note to everyone, next Monday um, is July 4th, which is a holiday here in the States. So uh, we will be canceling this meeting and we'll reconvene the following week. Great, thank you everyone and have a great week. Bye-bye.